Hello, children. How are you? How are you? Hello children, how are you? Welcome to session. Hi Debru Beta, hi Pooja. Hello Lucky. How are you guys? How are you? Yes, how are you guys? Is good. Okay children. So uh, today's session uh, is the third session uh, for biotechnology principle and process. Today we are concluding this chapter. Okay. Yes. So in the first two sessions, we were first we first in first two sessions we were discussing about you know introduction to biotechnology. Then we discussed about uh, different sectors in biotechnology, definition of biotechnology, and then uh, principles of biotechnology then tools of biotechnology. So we uh, started with all ingredients, right? So now we are making a dish out of it. We are making a delicious recipe. That's it, okay? So today we are concluding children, yes. So in today's session, we are mainly uh, going to discuss you know the process uh the, the process of rdna technology so now we know uh, what is vector now we know what is uh, you know recombinant dna now we know uh, how to make recombinant dna and we know different biotechnological weapons tools okay so using all those we are making a product imagine that way okay we are making imagine insulin okay yes so here a uh, first step in uh, first step towards you know recommending dna technology is isolation of genetic material children so you know uh, we need to isolate our gene of interest see i said you it's a gene of interest here in this case is insulin right yes very good so now taking it an example we are going to make insulin in our dna technology okay yes to make insulin we need to first isolate that uh, you know gene of interest from some big dna right i have a big dna inside a cell and from that cell i need to take my gene of interest look at this diagram you have a whole cell this is whole cell inside the cell you have you know large amount of dna from that you are supposed to isolate your desired gene so it's a big protocol so first thing what you have to do you have to take isolate you have to isolate dna from the cell first thing forget about isolating the desired gene first we need to take entire dna out of the cell right so your cell in in this case maybe any cell right uh, generally talking now i'm talking in general lot about insulin okay yes so uh, if you want to take or isolate gene from bacteria then you need to lyse bacterial cell or if you want to take you know genes that makes antibiotics in fungi then you need to take dna by rupturing the fungal cell or if you want to take some genes from plant then you need to rupture plant cell so how you are going to rupture lysis lysis means what children lysis means what rupturing or breaking right rupturing or breaking yes so you need to rupture the cell how you're going to rupture if it is bacterial cell you're going to break the bacterial cell we'll see this is a bacterial cell and if you want to break the bacterial cell how you're going to do that you have so many options you have so many options to break the bacterial cell wall you know bacterial cell wall is made of peptidoglycan right which is very tough material which is very tough material how you're going to break this you can use enzyme called lysozyme so this lysozyme is an enzyme which breaks the bacterial cell wall okay so you can use lysozyme if you want to break fungi to take the dna then you know fungal cell is made of 
chitin, right? So you need to use chitinase enzyme to break chitin cell wall of fungi. Isn't it? Sorry. So you, you need to use chitin to break the fungal cell wall. Because fungal cell wall is made of what? Fungal cell wall is made of chitin. Okay, good. Chitin. Yes. So if you want to take DNA from plant, then you, you are supposed to use cellulose enzyme because you know that plant cell is made of cellulose, right? So as plant cell wall is made of cellulose, you need to break the cellulose using cellulase enzyme. Now you might be thinking, ma'am, is there any alternative way to break the cell because uh, we are not having enzymes in our lab? So is there any alternative ways? Yes, children, you can use alternative ways, Abhirami, like, you know, uh, you can use alternative to cell lysis. Cell lysis means children, breaking or rupturing of cell see you are breaking the cell right you are breaking the cell cell wall so why you need to break the cell wall here see look at this picture you're you're supposed to break the cell wall why to take the dna out of it okay cell lysis means breaking the cell clear yes so yes you can use uh you know other than enzymes you can use another method like detergents you can use detergents. Detergents are nothing but soapy ingredients, children. Soapy ingredients, detergents, okay? Yes, so why we use detergents, you know? Hand washing, while washing your hands, you use detergents. While washing clothes, you use detergents. Why we use detergents? Detergents are the chemicals that kills microbes. If any microbes are present on our hands or on clothes, right? How they kill the microbes? By breaking the cell wall. So here in lab also, you can use detergents to rupture or to lyse the cell. Then you might be thinking, ma'am, even I don't have chemical, I don't have enzyme. Is there any alternative method to break the cell walls yes so you can do grinding okay so take a pestle and mortar isn't it so take a pestle and mortar so you need to take cell here mix it with some sand it will easily break no yes so just grind it finely so these are all different methods you can use to break the cell you can break cell by physical method like grinding you know grinding is physical method or you can lie cell using chemicals like detergent so detergent is chemical method okay or you can use enzymes like lysozyme chitinase cellulase so that is biological method so either biologically or physically or chemically you can break the cells of the different organisms right yes so now you understood the concept of lysing cell cell lysis i'm looking at the qa panel any doubts here abhirami w madhu any doubts here children okay so now Continuing, see, now you have break the cells with the intention of taking DNA. Now, do you think inside the cell only DNA is there? No. Inside the cell, you have a lot of debris. You have proteins, you have lipids, you have so many things. So now what you have to do, you have to add enzymes to this cell lysis solution okay to the solution where you have broken cells though no? to that you need to add enzymes what kind of enzymes you need to add protease okay you need to add protease you need to add lipase okay you need to add rnas because you, are, you also have rnas right so like this you need to add more and more enzymes why we need to add enzymes because here the cell solution cell solution is having proteins lipids rna and all so we don't want that we want only dna so to clear that we add protease enzymes to remove proteins lipase enzyme to remove lipids rna enzyme to remove rna so ultimately what you will be left with in that solution 
you have dna okay but now you need to take that dna out right you need to take that dna so what you are going to do see after adding all enzymes and all here in test tube you need to take out dna so now take that solution in a test tube and add chilled ethanol add chilled ethanol children chilled means very cold right chilled ethanol so once you add chilled ethanol to that pool of you know cell rupture solution your dna is going to precipitate can you see here it's coming like thread it comes like thread it start precipitating then using a glass rod you can easily lift it up okay so this is how you are going to isolate dna see now here you have dna okay is this your desired gene no this dna is having your desired gene see this dna is now in meters together now inside this dna you need to take your desired gene okay so let us see now we have you know a uh, whole dna from the cell now i want to take my desired gene i want to take my desired gene from that pool of dna okay so how i'm going to take it let us see let us go to next slide yeah now see i had big dna right i need to take my desired gene from that big dna so what i did what i did can you see here this is foreign dna okay this entire thing is foreign dna so i used restriction enzyme to cut that foreign dna into fragments so out of this fragment one of the one of my fragment is my gene of interest okay gene of interest so now what i'm going to do i'm going to take pick up that gene of interest and i'm going to insert into plasmid or so vector so to insert into plasmid again i need you know plasmid right so i'll take vector here here i'm taking a plasmid as a vector and using the same restriction enzyme what i used to cut the dna you know the same enzyme i used and i cut the plasmid so this is end of the plasmid this end is this one this end is this one so now here i have plasmid end and i have i have my gene of interest now i want to join these can you tell me which type of things i am i am getting here in this picture after digesting with restriction enzyme can you tell me yes Yes, tell me. Can you tell me which type of ends ends here? What type of ends I got here in this slide? Are these sticky ends or blunt ends? Are these sticky ends or blunt ends? Madhu, tell me, beta, here. What type of ends I'm having here? Chalo, children, bata do. Jaldi se bata do. Bablu beta, tell me which type of ends? Very good, Madhu. Very good. It, they are sticky ends, right? Very good. Very good. Thank you for your response, guys. Yes. So sticky ends. You are getting sticky ends here. So to join the sticky ends, I will glue them. I will stitch them. Which enzyme should I use? Which enzyme should I use to stitch here? Tell me. Which enzyme I'm using here? Yes, look at the slide and tell me. Yes, ligase. Ligase is also called molecular glue, right? Ligase also called molecular glue. So using ligase as a molecular glue, I stitched both my plasmid 
and the desired of desired gene. Now what I got? I got our DNA. This is recombinant DNA, right? This is recombinant DNA. So I have plasmid along with my gene of interest, right? So now I got recombinant DNA, okay? Yes. So after this step, what I'm going to do? This is very important, children. See, here what I did, I made doing so much of circles here. See, broke the cell, purified the DNA, okay, using ethanol using enzymes and all you, you you broke the cell you got the dna and then what you did you use the restriction enzyme you cut the dna and then you got this right see how much circus you did how much effort you put to get this step right so how much effort you have put now to make one i'm i'm spending this much so can you expect can you expect can you expect me to get more and more insulin using only one this RDNA? Or I want more plus more RDNA of like this? Tell me, you want more RDNA to make more insulin or from one only? From only this one, I'll get sufficient insulin? Tell me. Tell me, children, tell me. You want more RDNA to make more insulin or from only one RDNA you make more insulin? Tell me. One is sufficient. See, okay. I, according to you, if one is sufficient, this will take, if, if I put it into bacteria, to become two, it will take 20 minutes, then 40 minutes. Then, so this is how it will multiply. Now imagine, now imagine if I multiply more and put into bacteria, if I get more and then I, I put it into host cell. So I'll be getting better results, right? So for that, what I need to do? Yes. So for that, more number of a desired DNA. Okay, more number of a desired DNA. Yes. For that, what we do, we use a technique called PCR. We use a technique called PCR. What is PCR? PCR is a technique. Polymerase chain reaction. Okay. Polymerase chain reaction. It is a technique where we amplify DNA. Amplify means making more, more, more copies. It's like a Xerox uh, a technique. Okay. You put one scan copy and get hundreds of Xerox copy. Whatever the number you want to get, you can make a Xerox. No, the same photocopy of it. No, the same here. Okay, you want to, if you want to make more and more of number of copies of same DNA, you need to go for PCR, polymerase chain reaction. Okay, so let us study more and more about PCR. Okay, children, yes, I am getting good response today. Yes, thank you for your response. Yes, so let us study PCR. Children, from, uh, you know, board point of view, this technique is very important for three marks question. If uh, you're thinking from a neat point of view, I'll be telling you what to focus from neat point of view, okay? Yes, so this is little important. Please uh, do focus on this concept, okay? Yes, done. PCR technique involves three steps, namely denaturation, annealing, and extension denaturation annealing and extinction these are the three steps of pcr technique these are the three steps of pcr technique okay yes let us study what are these steps and what what happens during this okay yes let us imagine this is your double stranded dna Nothing but your gene of interest means insulin gene in our example. Okay. Yes. It is double stranded. You can see it is having five prime, three prime N and anti parallel five prime, three prime N. 
So now it is double stranded. You know, during DNA replication, the two strands of DNA going to separate, right? Such that the enzyme can sit on one of the strands and copy the copy the strand by adding nucleotides, isn't it? So you need to separate the strand. Here, how are you going to separate the strand? By heating around you know 90 degrees celsius 80 to 90 degrees celsius okay so by giving heat from 80 to 90 degrees celsius you're breaking the bonds between the strand these are hydrogen bonds no between two strands we have hydrogen bonds see here it is a here it is t there will be hydrogen bond, right? Two hydrogen bonds. Yes. When you give temperature, when you give heat treatment, the hydrogen bonds break. As a result, you can see denaturation. Denaturation means separation of two strands. Can you see here? This is one strand and this is another strand. So both the strands are now got separated. Isn't it? Yes. Are you getting... Yes. Are you getting children? Yes. So now after denaturation means of the separation of strands, you know, during, 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 during annealing, I'm telling beta, I'm telling what happens in annealing. You know, during replication, you know, polymerase enzyme needs some primer because it will add nucleotides only to three free three prime end, right? So it cannot initiate as its own. So the polymerase enzyme, DNA polymerase enzyme needs free three prime N to add nucleotides. To facilitate that, a small RNA primer will be added, no? RNA primer will be added. Yes. Here also, to the test tube, after heat treatment to the test tube. Imagine all these are happening in test tube children. Okay. Here you got separated strands. Okay. Now, same test tube, what you are doing, you are adding primers. Okay. As you allow primers to interact with these doubles, a single stranded DNA, due to complementarity, primers will bind to strands. Can you see here? RNA primers will bind. Okay, now in third step, what you do to that same test tube with DNA primers, you will add raw materials. You will add raw materials for synthesis of DNA. What are the raw materials? Raw materials are deoxynucleotides, right? DNTPs. Yes, and along with you need enzyme, DNA polymerase, DNA polymerase enzyme you need. So why you need DNA polymerase? It is the enzyme which is going to add nucleotides, right? At three prime end, it's going to add nucleotides. So you need three uh, DNA polymerase enzyme. So these two are the raw materials. One, one is nucleotides and DNA polymerase. So here you add these to the test tube and incubate for some time. Now you can see in the third step to incubate for some time, you can see extension takes place. Extension means your polymerase enzyme will keep adding nucleotides, making double-stranded DNA. Now you see you started with one strand and now by one complete cycle, how many strands of DNA you got? You got two. This is one, this is two. So how many you got? Two. You're doubling it, right? You're amplifying it, right? Children, so you got this principle? Yes, very good, very good. This is what PCR. This is what PCR, children. Okay, now imagine in that PCR machine, I just put this mixture and uh, in a test tube and put it in that machine. That machine will, you know, change the temperature first step, 80 degrees Celsius, and then it will start cooling for annealing temperature around 37 degrees Celsius. Okay, and then extinction also 37 degrees Celsius. Okay, once it uh, done, done with this step, again, the machine will start from first cycle in the same test tube, right? 
again this uniform dna again undergo denaturation these two strand again undergo denaturation now here how many single strand you get for second cycle you get four single stranded dna right see for first cycle you get two single stranded dna after denaturation after this one complete cycle you will be getting four single stranded dna after denaturation are you getting and if you are getting four single stranded dna means by the end of the second cycle you will be getting eight double stranded dna are you getting this calculation children i am looking at the qa panel are you getting no yes very good so this is how pcr is very useful now you say your insulin gene many copies you are making insulin gene in many copies right you can make billion billion copies within hours of time within hours you can make billion 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 times okay yes children i am uh, expecting one common sense question here from your side i told you after this completion of extinction in the same test tube all these newly formed double stranded dna again undergo denaturation again undergo annealing again undergo extinction i have a question here see i am showing test tubes here no you will add ingredients only first time you are not adding again and again so if it is the case when it enters for second round the earlier added ingredients will be still there to sufficient so you know supply the second round of reaction what about the tag polymerase enzyme enzymes are protein no so if during second round of reaction the entire test tubes are undergoing denaturation temperature that is 80 degree celsius if you add any of the proteins at 80 degree they will denature so your enzymes will be destroying right your enzymes will be destroyed isn't it so we need to do some smart thing here right so you need to do some smart thing here what you need to do i am not adding ordinary polymerase enzyme i am adding a special type of polymerase enzyme what that enzyme is called tag polymerase enzyme okay tag polymerase enzyme see look at the step tag polymerase right tag polymerase let us study what is the tag polymerase tag polymerase is a thermostable enzyme see it can withstand temperature from 37 degree celsius to 75 degree celsius shows optimum activity it means it can tolerate up to denaturation temperature that's why i use tag polymerase enzyme this is very thermostable enzyme very unique enzyme isolated from a bacteria name thermus aquaticus children this is very important for your competitive point of view tag polymerase is a thermostable enzyme isolated from which bacteria thermus aquaticus hence the name tag t thermus aq for aquaticus thermus aquaticus getting children getting are you getting children yes and one more information like pcr technique was discovered by carry mullis okay this technique was developed by scientist named carry mullis yes yes puja i am coming to your uh, question at the end of the session otherwise now it will break the flow of the class okay i am not ignoring you puja at the end during quiz time i'll take up your question okay yes so any doubts here any doubts in pcr technique the third step of our dna technology any doubts no yes 
So if you are done with the PCR, shall we go to next PPT? Let us see what is there for you in next PPT, next step of uh, DNA technology, right? Is C. Okay. First, we took those, so we lysed the cell, then we did RDMA, then we amplified our gene of interest using PCR. And now fourth step. Now we have recombinant DNA, right? We need to insert, okay? We need to insert that our DNA into host cell. Host cell may be anything. For insulin, I'm using, you know, bacteria. For other proteins, you may use any other host cell, right? Yes, so now I need to transfer it into host cell. Yesterday, we discussed about transformation methods, right? Transformation methods. What are different transformation methods we discussed? Transformation method. So it may be micro injection, right? Or it may be using viruses, or it may be using lipid vessels, or electroporation, like, you know, giving heat shock, cold shock treatment, and using calcium ions, or it may be gene gun, biolistic method. So any suitable method it depends on the type of rdna you are using and the cell of your choice right based on that you need to choose one of this method and transfer your rdna into the host cell so this is host cell right yes using any one of the method here either by this micro injection gene gun or lipid measles or electroporation heat and cold shock treatment using calcium you can send the rdna into host cell now once it is in host cell see what you're doing imagine you're not taking one one cell and doing this right you're doing it in bulk so now in the test tube you did transformation okay you have so many cells in it in this so many cells, you have both transformed and non-transformed cells. So, okay, you have both transformed and non-transformed cells. Now, you're supposed to pick up only transformed cells, right? Because only transformed cells are going to give you insulin, isn't it? Right? Okay, children. Yes, don't, don't fight, okay? I try to use both Hindi and English for your convenience, okay? Chalo, okay. Hame kya chahiye idhar? Hame sirf transform cell chahiye. We need only transform cells, right? Yes. So, isliye hame kya karna hai idhar? We need to do, we need to eliminate non-transform cells. We should eliminate non-transform cells. For that, what I do, hame kya karna hai idhar? We need to take a petri plate add nutrient medium and amphicillin antibiotic to it okay yes so now you pour the liquid of a test tube containing both transformed and non-transformed cell into this nutrient medium along with amphicillin as it is having amphicillin if any bacteria is sensitive to amphicillin it will die and the one which is having resistance to amphicillin will survive no so look at this here in transform cells, you are having plasmid where the plasmid is having a gene that gives resistance to amphicillin. You remember PBR322 plasmid? Yes, it was having ampicillin and tetracycline resistance gene, no? Yes. So now if I add, when the transform cell is growing here in the presence of ampicillin, because of the presence of ampicillin resistance gene due to plasmid recombinant DNA in it, the cells are going to survive. If the non-transformed cell is here, then it won't survive because it is not having any plasmid. As a result, it don't have any ampicillin resistance gene. So it's not having any ampicillin resistance gene. As a result, when you put this non-transformed cell to ampicillin media, these cells are going to die. So at the end, whatever you get in this plate are ampicillin resistant. So all these are ampicillin resistant colonies. Okay. So these are all ampicillin resistant. That means transformed cells. So all these are 
transform cells, right? All these are acer transformed cells, hai na bacho? Yes. Okay, now I got pure transform cells, which are having my, uh, you know, recombinant DNA, which is going to give me my protein or my product of interest, right? Yes, so next step. Now I have, you know, host cell with recombinant DNA. I need to grow it. I need to multiply it. Okay, I need to multiply it. Say, for example, I have a E. coli here. I have E. coli with its own DNA and also my plasmid DNA with my gene of interest here, right? Yes. So now I need to grow it. I have taken this from previous slide though, from where the transform bacteria is coming. Here, from this colony, I am taking transform cells. And now I want to grow them in a fermenter or bioreactor. So now I am going to take these recombinant cells and start growing in bioreactors. Okay. What are bioreactors, children? Look at the image. Look at the image. It is a typical bioreactor. Bioreactor is nothing but a fermentation vessel. Bioreactor is nothing but a Fermentation vessel. Can you see here? Bioreactor is nothing but a fermentation vessel. Okay. So why we use this for, uh, fermentation vessel or bioreactor? To grow our transform cells in many number, many number. And ma'am, why can't we grow these recombinant cells in regular glass vessels or vessels at kitchen? No. You can't grow because see at kitchen you have vessels with lid loose lids air can enter it so the microbes in the air can enter that vessel and cause contamination no you you remember in the, from the first session i told you that maintenance of sterile environment is of priority in biotechnology so if you if you allow outside air to enter the vessel instead of your recombinant bacteria the bacteria in air can start growing in that vessel right so you 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 cannot get your desired product isn't it that's why you need a closed container you need what closed container so that facility will be in the bioreactor will be there in the bioreactor so here what you do in the closed container here you can see the lid is closed along with the closed environment it has several facilities in it what what facilities aeration because the microbes in inside growing uh, growing inside this need aeration right if you close tightly after some time oxygen will exhaust then your microbes will start dying. No, you don't want that. You need to give continuous supply of oxygen to your microbes. So you have aeration facility. Can you see here? This is a pump which is allowing air to enter your bioreactor. And you can see here. Can you see a filter here? Yes. Whatever air is entering will be filtered. So air which is entering here is sterile a children it is sterile a okay so air inside inside the fermenter what air is going no it is a sterile a okay it is a sterile a and now see if you put all your media all microbes here into this closed vessel can you see here this is closed vessel. This is media. The green one is media. Medium is nothing but nutrient. Okay. So this is a pump where medium is feeding. Medium is nothing but children, nutrient. Okay. Nutrients for the growth of your microbes. So it is also filtered. Can you see here? Yeah. And it is entering here, pouring. If you live as such, see, at kitchen, if you live, you know, uh, some... Uh, liquids like you know gravy or sambar or buttermilk after some time it will start settling down same way your microbes will start settling down here and your media also start heavy particles will start settling down can you expect proper growth no 
that's why you need to mix it you need to stir it continuously such that all the microbes and the media will be mixing so when you mix no the microbes will get a better chance to get nutrition instead of settling in one place so you can expect better growth as a result you know proper mixing will happen for that mixing we have an you know instrument called agitator just like your spoon in kitchen okay yes and you also have to give proper temperature for that you have thermal jackets so thermal jackets are the jackets coils which are surrounding the vessel you can see here just like your flask at home tea flask coffee flask is yes. so they don't allow temperature to escape they will maintain the temperature okay yes and you know we have sensory probes sensory probes what are these function like temperature control thermometer if temperature rises say for example you are you need 37 degrees celsius for the growth of microbes inside it so if temperature rises above 37 degrees celsius it will be detected by the sensors immediately immediately in this thermal jacket cold water will pass to bring down the temperature back to 37 degrees celsius if it goes low means it goes some 27 degrees celsius then thermal jacket the coils in the thermal jacket will heat up and give temperature back to 37 degrees celsius so this is how temperature will be adjusted by sensing the sensors along with that we also need ph children ph sometimes you know your microbes will produce more acids as their as their uh, metabolism they do respire they do uh, uh, what to say uh, they also do some metabolic activity na bachcho okay as a result of their metabolic activity they make acids or sometimes they make some waste which increases the ph or decreases the ph so but you don't want ओके आपका आपका बैक्टीरिया को क्या चाहिए पीएच अराउंड मे बी सेवन पॉइंट टू पीएच ओके सो नाउ यू नीड टू मेंटेन पीएच इनसाइड दिस वेजल एट सेवन पॉइंट टू आपको सेवन पॉइंट टू पीएच मेंटेन करना है ऐसे कैसे कर सकते हैं आप अगेन यू आर हैविंग ए सेंसर फॉर पीएच ओके सो फॉर पीएच आल्सो यू आर हैविंग ए सेंसर okay so whenever the ph goes down if it goes down bases will be added and made it to 7.2 if it goes high acids will be added and made get it back to 7.2 so this is how ph of the vessel will be maintained is is tarah hum ph ko maintain kar sakte using ph probes getting children yes other than that see you have submerged aerator submerged aerator what is this though you're giving air from the top this is different okay due to liquid here the air which you are giving from the top may not reach the bottom that's why to make sure proper aeration i have one more back that is submerged aerator wait can you see here the i am not giving air from the top of the media what i do i send the pipe which is taking the air to the bottom can you see here i'll change the color okay uh let me take blue yes see this is air the pipe carrying air will come to the bottom and now here in the bottom that pipe is having holes so through that hole air is coming now air will come from bottom of the media to top so proper aeration will happen if i give air from the top the air will not reach bottom because of the media the pressure if i give air from the bottom air can come easily upside due to light weight right so that's why i have submerged aerator okay children any doubts till now any doubts did you get the yeah i will tell you how ph decrease and increase i'll tell you again so other than that any doubts your children
Any doubts about this? Yes. Okay. I need to explain one more important part here. Effluent. Effluent. See, after sometimes, say for example, you're giving media. After five hours, the, the nutrient in that media is utilized by microbes. And this liquid is filled with waste now. That waste has to remove out of the vessel such that you can add fresh media into it again right yes so to remove the excess or to remove the waste or to, to remove whatever you don't want from the vessel you need an outlet called effluent outlet effluent outlet children this is very important the effluent which comes from your uh, bioreactor no you need to treat it carefully because it is having microbes you don't know which type of microbe you're using. If you release that microbes directly into rivers or environment, agriculture land, you're distributing microbes unnecessarily to environment, right? So you should make proper treatment for that, okay? And then release the effluent into some proper means. Okay, children? Yes. So someone was someone is asking question on how as uh, pH will increase and decrease, isn't it? Is it, it is the question, right? How pH decrease and increase? Yes, children. First, I'll take how pH will decrease, means 7.2 from 7.2, how it may go up to 6.2, okay? See, bacteria or microbes sometimes produces acids during their metabolic activity they produce acids these acids reduces the ph of this media okay now how to get back to 7.2 add some base to the media till it come back to 7.2 so this is how sometimes the ph may go to acid condition or sometimes it may go to say for example 8.5 ph how it will go to 8.5 pH? It will produce some metabolites. It will produce, these microbes will produce some metabolites, mainly some proteins, okay? Whenever you talk about proteins, generally it will be alkaline. So it increases the pH to 8.5. This is the condition. Again, you add some acid till acids by hand, or supply through media and get the pH 8.5 to your desired pH. Okay, so this is how you do. Is it clear, children? Which doubts here? Children? Shall I go to next? Next step of our DNA technology? Come on, children. Pablo, Pooja, Madhu, come on. Your response. Okay, thank you for your response. Yes. So now, types of bioreactors. We discussed the importance of bioreactors and how we uh, grow our uh, transformed cells in bioreactors, right? Now we are going to discuss types of bioreactors. Children, there are many types of bioreactors available in the market, but I'm not discussing all those bioreactors. I'm confining to NCRT and I'm going to discuss only two types of bioreactors which are discussed in your NCRT for your syllabus. Okay, children, again, from board point of view, these diagrams are very important. Okay, two marks, just diagram and label. Okay. These are two types. First one is simple stirred tank bioreactor. Second one is sparse stirred tank bioreactor. Okay, so this is simple and this is sparse. Let us see what uh, what is the difference and what are the different parts of uh, these bioreactors. As I mentioned, this is a bioreactor, and any bioreactor should be closed vessel. You can see here, it's closed. Okay, and it is having a motor to control the flow of liquids in and out and also the pressure and all. Then you have, you know, uh, broth 
added added to the culture media and you have a port to add acid or base to control ph and you have you know inlet for steam for sterilization you are giving sterilized air okay yes and in addition to that what you have yes yeah, st sterile air outlet okay and then what you have see mixer like grinder like blades though no? what are these these are nothing but impellers you can see one two three these three are impellers what are impellers they are like spoons children they just rotate like this such that agitation will happen properly impellers the main function of impeller is you know agitation in your grinder store or you know it, it will be turning like this no the stones the grinding stones yeah same way here impellers are you know just fan like or blade like structures which upon turning give agitation for the media and cell and at the top you might be thinking ma'am it, it also looks like impeller but it's given as foam breaker what is the difference see the top one is foam breaker it's not impeller what is the function of foam breaker see if you cook anything at home maybe some sweets or using milk and all after some time foam will rise okay if you don't uh, you know stir it properly okay if you don't stir it properly what will happen it will form foam will rise and it will overflow it will overflow to avoid that you you put a spoon and you stir like this and you break the foam you just break the foam and uh, stir once Fro break the foam stir like this break it stir it like this you do know same job will be done by this foam breaker okay to prevent the overflow clear children yes so this is simple stirred tank stirred tank stirring is there no because of impellers you have three impellers so it it will stir yes this is a simple stirred tank bioreactor then what is second one sparsed stirred tank bioreactor but there will be no difference okay all structures remain same just to show the difference they have given only difference here in this diagram in addition to all your impellers acid base control foam breaker everything what you have no you have an additional sparger you have sparger can you see here bubbles can you see bubbles okay from sparger the bubbles are coming bubbles are coming okay and from the top you have some surface some space where you are allowing gas to interact with the media here you cannot have that surface empty surface full with air but here you have you know gas interaction air interaction with the media as you have bubbles though bubbles will increase the surface area for oxygen such that oxygen infusion will be better in this compared to this type of you know fermenters in case of sparged fermenters where spargers spargers generally will be situated in the bottom of the vessel and wherever there will be sparger the top space will be left for air interaction so this will you know increase oxygen interaction better with the media okay so this is the main difference between your simple stir tank bioreactor and sparged tank bioreactor in case of simple there will be no sparge sparge of air simply air will be giving directly to media but here we are making the air to bubble by giving it from the bottom of the bioreactor okay children any doubts here children any doubts yes children what were the what you, you what you didn't heard okay
So any doubt, any doubts here, children, till now? I'm asking you again. Any doubts? No? Okay, so shall I continue to next slide? Shall I continue children? You don't have any doubts, right? Okay, great. Thank you so much for your response. Okay, yes, Shubham, yes, I'll take. I'll, I'll take neat classes also, Shubham. Okay, yes. So this is last step of your our DNA technology children. First step is isolation of DNA. Second is our DNA making. Third is transformation. Fourth is selection of transformation. Fifth is, fifth step is putting it into bioreactor. Six step, downstreaming. What is downstreaming? See here, in previous step, what you did? You have taken your bacteria, transform bacteria, and you added transform bacteria into fermenters or bioreactors, right? Yes. So now, in these bioreactors, inside the bioreactors, your microbes are growing. As your transform microbes are growing, inside each of the bacteria, your pro product is also forming, right? Your product is also forming. So now you need to take those microbes out of the fermenter. You need to take your microbes out of the fermenter to take the products. That is nothing but downstreaming process. So downstreaming refers to recovery. Recovery, see, you need to take your cells out. See, you're taking, you are having cells here, transform cells. So you need to take those cells. You need to recover the cells. And then what? You need to purify them, right? So again, you need to break open the cell. Once you break open the cell, all content of the cell you will be getting. Again, it is a mixture of protein, lipid, your product, okay, insulin, everything is there. So out of so many products, you need to purify your particular product like insulin. How you're going to do? First, you take out the cells from bioreactors, rupture them. You get a liquid. Now you do special, uh, what to say, uh, techniques like, you know, it may be centrifugation. Okay. It may be centrifugation or it may be special uh, advanced type of chromatography. Chromatography, children. Chromatography. There are so many type of chromatography to mention few, uh, you know, HPLC, Okay, TLC and all. Okay, otherwise, uh, there are many other methods like filtration methods. So, using suitable method, depending upon your product of interest, you are going to get purify your product ultimately. So, this is nothing but downstreaming process. Here, one more thing: after getting your product, what what to do with this waste? Waste effluent. आप ऐसे यू ही इसको फेंक नहीं फेंक सकते इसको कुछ प्रॉपर ट्रीटमेंट करना पड़ता है ना इसको इसको क्या करेंगे हम हम इसको फर्मेंटेशन प्रो जो भी बचते हैं ना जो भी बचे कुछ होते हैं ना आफ्टर गेटिंग योर प्रोडक्ट ओके जो भी वेस्ट विल लेफ्ट ओवर नो सो यू नीड टू गिव प्रॉपर ट्रीटमेंट फॉर दैट if it contains any hazardous chemicals, if it contains any hazardous microbes or any kind of hazardous cell, you need to properly destroy it. You need to give proper treatment and then you need to dispose. So one is recovery of your products from the fermentation drug, recovery of your products from the fermentation drug and disposal of the waste. All these together makes your downstreaming process okay children so this is how you're going to make products in our dna technology yes shubha any doubts here in downstreaming process children 
if not if not you are going to help me in listing the steps of our dna technology see today what we discussed steps or process of our dna technology no so you are going to help me to list the steps isolation of genetic material cutting of dna amplification okay and then insertion obtaining foreign gene product downstreaming so you are going to help me list out this can you first one is first step is can you help me yes i'll write in brief i'll not take much of your time okay isolation second one is restriction digestion third one is making our dna then amplification using pcr after that selection of recombinants right selection i did selection then transformation and selection then culture in bioreactors and then downstreaming downstreaming isn't it yes so these are different steps of our dna technology okay yes children so we are going to end the session in another five minutes before that i want to give some important information here just know this to do our dna in plants we use a vector called tie plasmid tie plasmid is it T means tumor inducing. T refers to tumor inducing. I refers to inducing. T refers to tumor. I refers to inducing. Thai plasmid, tumor inducing plasmid, which is isolated from Agrobacterium tumefaciens. Okay, tumefaciens, tumefaciens. So this plasmid is generally used for. plants like how you use pbr322 for bacteria e coli use type plasmid for plants and for animal cells to make uh, animal cells if your host cell is animal cell then you commonly use retrovirus to take your our dna into animal cells children okay yes so with this we completed this chapter if you have any doubts from all these three session please uh, feel free to discuss questions here otherwise i'll take yes from tomorrow we are having a class at 7:30 okay yes so quiz time so now we are going to discuss quiz some quiz yes answer the question quickly children during gene cloning which is called gene taxi which of the following options here is a gene taxi is it vaccine a bacterium a plasmid a protozoa come on come on children yes it is plasmid plasmid is called a gene taxi because it is a vector right very good okay next question type plasmid being used for introducing genes in plant is obtained from which of the bacteria is it e coli or agrobacterium tumefaciens agrobacterium rhizogenes or klebsiella fast fast very good abhi bhi discuss kiya na no madhu it's agrobacterium tumefacien type plasmid tumor inducing plasmid is from agrobacterium tumefacien and is mainly used for plant host cells yes next question in our dna technology the term vector refers to the term vector refers to enzyme used to cut dna into fragments the sticky end of the dna fragment or ligase enzyme a plasmid that transport dna into living cell 
Which one is called vector here? Come on. Answer quickly. Very good. Because plasmid is the vector vehicle, right? Very good. Very good. Very good, Ajay. Very good, Pablo. Okay. PB or PBR was PBR322 plasmid was constructed by whom? Plasmid, B for some scientist, R for some scientist name. PBR322. Very good. Bolivar and Rodriguez are the scientists who constructed plasmid. Yes. Which of the following is a plasmid? PBR322, BAM H1, Salvin, Eco R1. Among these four, which one is a plasmid? Very good. This PBR322 is a plasmid and remaining three are restriction enzymes children. Yes. PCR is most useful in DNA synthesis, amplification, protein synthesis, amino acid synthesis. Think once, think once, think once and answer. DNA synthesis is different. DNA amplification is different. DNA synthesis is different. DNA amplification is different. <laughs> okay. PCR is used in amplification. You are multiplying. You need to multiply. You need to multiply the copies of DNA, right? Yes. Okay. DNA synthesis. DNA synthesis. <laughs> Better. Don't get confused. In PCR, you are amplifying of course there is a synthesis of dna but that process is amplification because you are increasing that number of dna right okay chill yes now tell me this is a very interesting step in which step of pcr maximum heat is applied is it denaturation annealing extension or after extension step yeah i come to previous question now answer this Bablo, answer this. I'll come to previous question. Yes, denaturation. To break the hydrogen bonds between double standard DNA, we use high temperature. Okay. Yes, Bablo, this is for you. Yes, DNA synthesis is better. Yeah, of course, you are making a, a DNA from a template strand. Okay. Yes, in PCR, of course, you do. You do this. But you will you stop it for only one round of synthesis? No, right? You will make, again, you use each strand as a template. And again, you make new copy. And in next step, again, these will act as strands, as, you know, template. And again, make copies. Okay, Bablu, sorry. <laughs> Your name is displaying as W beta. That's why I'm calling you that. Okay, Bablu. So this is how you are increasing the number along with synthesis. You're just not synthesizing along with you're increasing the copy of that. That's why it is amplification. Okay. Hope it clear you. Okay, children. From tomorrow, my class timings with you will be in the morning. Have a, you know, great session in the morning. Let's have very fresh start day with amazing session. And tomorrow we are starting with new chapter, right? Yes. So hope you enjoyed uh, today's session with me and you understood what i explained you if you have any doubts children please post here and i'll be happy to help you and please 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 rate the session and rate the session and uh, give your uh, inputs and please do subscribe and share okay yes children we'll meet in next session till then take it bye bye